this any uh, change in air pressure yesterday evening? About 10 o'clock? Yes? So, did y'all feel that low pressure come through? Bring us a shower? You notice how bright the sky is today? When the high, high pressure airs come to fill in the space left behind? Have y'all noticed that? Isn't it a beautiful day? So, uh, y'all didn't respond to any change in air pressure yesterday? <laughs> it was probably so slight that you didn't feel anything. But, so, let me ask you this then. Uh, have y'all ever gone up to the mountains? And uh, say you started here at Wilson, and you drove up to the mountains, and you got to this little town called Old Fort. Oh, that's me, it's Old Fort. Sorry. <laughs> you got this little town called Old Fort, and you drive up about six miles to where Asheville and Black Mountain are, and you feel your ears want to get tight and they pop. Have you ever had that happen? Or you've been in an airplane, and you start out from Raleigh, and you go up. 20, 30,000 feet in the air and your ears get tight. Have you ever felt that? Change in air pressure? Yeah. I think that's why we have things called eustachian tubes. You know, because you can yawn or swallow and uh, it can allow air to be released from your eardrums so they don't explode when you have differences in air pressure. Does that make sense? So, uh, let me define first what air pressure is, and uh, there's usually high and low uh, masses of air that move because of the Earth's rotation, and they are involved in a lot of our different weather patterns, and birds have to respond to that, you know, because they live in nature. So I'm mainly going to end talking about how birds respond to low pressure, and in particular storms. Okay. So, Air pressure. Okay. Uh, some people call it atmospheric pressure. Some people call it barometric pressure. Uh, it's basically the air of the atmosphere around the Earth is made up of molecules, and those molecules have a mass to them. You know, they weigh something. You know, you've got nitrogen, water, uh -huh. methane, carbon dioxide, and other molecules. And those molecules have a mass. So the closer you are to sea level, the more concentrated those molecules are, if you will. So if you go up in elevation, the dispersion of molecules becomes more and air pressure uh, gets a little bit lower. But, uh, here's something we used to do a class to the mountains. Y'all like to eat bags of tater chips? You know, so you could have a bag of potato chips sitting on the seat of the vehicle. And you know how it's uh, nice and uh, you, know, you can press into it. You go up to Mount Mitchell, 6,600 feet, and that bag of potato chips looks like it could explode. You know, because of the air pressure difference from whenever you started at uh, Wilson and then you drive up to the mountains. Does that make any sense to y'all? So. Uh, we start out, say, at Wilson, maybe we're 100, 100 feet above sea level, and then you go up into the mountains. We're not going to go to Mount Everest, are we? But we go up about 2,000 meters above sea level. Uh, there's a difference in air pressure. From where we started, the air pressure is higher. We go up in elevation, the air pressure is lower. So it pushes against our eardrum when we go up in elevation because the air pressure is greater pushing out from our ear compared to what's pushing toward it. A bag of potato chips will expand because there's greater air pressure from where we started at Wilson compared to being up at Mount Mitchell. So the bag of potato chips will look like it's about ready to explode. Does that make sense to y'all? So I bet you've experienced some of those things before. So, or you experience when you come down from a plane a difference in air pressure too, air pressure increases, so you may feel more pressure on your eardrums as you land. So have y'all ever yawned before to try to get your eardrums to quit hurting or swallowed air? Okay. So. Okay. 
So that's air pressure, the weight of molecules of air pressing down on the surface of the earth. It tends to vary based upon location. Because the earth rotates, so can y'all feel how fast the earth is rotating right now? So we're all going about the same speed, aren't we? So you can't tell that we're moving, I suppose. But usually because the earth uh, rotates, it forms masses of air that have similar characteristics. And those two common types of air masses are called low pressure and high pressure air masses. So what we experienced yesterday evening was a low pressure system came through. I tend to watch the Weather Channel, and I tell you, I think it's more for entertainment than actual intellect. So they predicted no rain for us, and my wife looked at the weather from a, the Raleigh 11 channel, the ABC channel, and they predicted it right. I mean, no more than she said it started raining at the house, and the Weather Channel didn't predict anything. But a low pressure system came through last night. Uh, it brought with it some rain, didn't it? We had about three tenths of an inch at home. So low pressure is usually associated with an air mass that the air is ascending. That means the air is rising. So when air rises, it cools. When air cools, it can't hold as much moisture. So water vapor will condense into a liquid. And you'll see it as little droplets that we call clouds. And then it usually rains, doesn't it, when there's clouds in the sky? So you usually associate storms, cloudy weather, uh, rain or other types of precipitation with low pressure air masses. Do y'all watch the weather at all? No. They usually put a letter L to indicate a low pressure air mass. The way that where we're at, at the latitude that we're at, most of our air masses tend to come from a westerly direction, you know, say from the Pacific and they move across from say California, Washington across to us and then they move on to when they finally cycle back down toward the equator and then come back or they cycle toward the poles the North Pole. So low pressure air masses, the air from them rises. Water vapor in particular condenses, makes clouds, rain, storms, snow. So, uh, we're now in a high pressure air mass. The air is typically coming down and then spreading out over the surface of the land. So what's today look like to y'all? Isn't it beautiful? A little bit of wind, bright sunny blue sky, fair weather. So, uh, let me ask y'all another question. Do y'all know what diffusion is? Movement of molecules from high to low concentration. So air moves from an area that's of low pressure to a no, air moves from an area of high pressure to an area of low pressure. So when that low pressure air mass came through last night, it's going to be uh, filtered in then by a high pressure system. I hope that made sense. I kind of got off there a little bit. Ha ha. Okay. So, I don't know what my time is. Is my time doing all right? You're fine. Fine? Okay. So, birds really don't respond all that much to high pressure because it's fair weather, sunny. Uh, their activities don't really, aren't altered very much from a, a normal, if you will. So the thing that birds primarily respond to is storms, bad weather, rain, snow, wind, uh, hurricanes. <coughs> so uh, for whatever reason, it seems to be a adaptive trait that birds can recognize when air pressure drops. Okay. Because that is a, usually an indication of bad weather to come. 
No one knows how birds are able to recognize uh, the change in air pressure. Uh, it is thought that inside of the bird's body, they have seven or eight air sacs that are attached to their lungs. And it's thought that there's a change in pressure within their air sacs that they can recognize that a low pressure system is coming. And birds also have ears. They don't have external lobes like we do, but birds do have ears and eardrums. So some people think that their eardrums are sensitive to changes in air pressure, like I tried to uh, start with y'all. Like maybe you've experienced a change in air pressure in your eardrums, you felt it that way. Maybe birds can do that too. One of the biggest things that birds will do with a change in air pressure is they will increase their feeding. Very true if it's a winter storm that's coming. Have y'all noticed that? Do any of y'all feed birds? You've seen how birds will really pick up their feeding, especially in the winter when a storm's coming through and the temperature's gonna drop drastically when there's snow coming and finding food, especially seeds, might be hard for a small bird. Let me ask y'all, how much do you think a bird weighs? Like you see a cardinal, you know, our state bird. What do you think a cardinal weighs? How many grams? Or do you think a cardinal weighs pounds? How much do you think a cardinal weighs? A couple of grams. I guess you could say, well, Dr. B, you should have uh, prepared a little bit better. So, I'm going to say to y'all that uh, a cardinal weighs an ounce and a half. So that would be about 45 grams. Hey, I know y'all like to play on these things. Uh -huh. So, one point five ounces. So, uh, there's about thirty grams in an ounce. So, about forty-five grams. So, uh, needless to say, we don't eat cardinals, do do we? They don't weigh enough to provide much food. So. Uh, if a cardinal weighs, let's say, 45 grams, uh, that cardinal is going to need to take in at least a quarter to a half of its body weight to survive, especially a cold event or a storm. I mean, Y'all know birds have really high metabolic rates, so they are very active feeders, especially those that eat seeds. So, And you think smaller birds may only weigh 10 to 12 grams, maybe a uh, not even half an ounce. So uh, foraging will definitely increase in a bird that has a very high metabolic rate and needs to take in a third, a half or so of its body weight every day just to survive. So the one reference that I had showed that because birds are able to sense a change in air pressure, that their level of stress do y'all know there's a stress hormone? And for the life of me, I can't think of what its name is. Ha ha. What's it called? Cortisol. Cortisol. I was thinking oxytocin. I don't know why. Is there even such a word? Okay. Cortisol. Yeah. Okay. The birds, uh, from the studies that have been done, it's shown that they're able to understand the concept of an air change and they don't get stressed out about it. And they don't also increase their metabolic rate, which would, of course, potentially waste valuable resources uh, that they have stored. Uh, you typically don't see as many birds high in the air during a low pressure air mass because of the turbulence of the wind above the earth. So birds typically don't fly as high as they normally would. You won't see as many birds soaring And before the event, especially rain, you typically will see birds will try to find shelter, stay out of the rain. Let me see. Do y'all have y'all's phones? Am I about done? Got some uh, more time. Okay. So y'all have your phones? Because I didn't want to, I didn't want to uh, fill up the slide 
thing with uh, there. So that was the main reference that I uh, used. They studied a bird called the white-throated sparrow, which occurs here on campus. And that's been mainly the, the primary bird that's been studied in terms of how the white-throated sparrow reacts to changes in air pressure. But most of the studies that I looked at, which only were two, uh -huh, uh, they, showed, they used an experimental wind chamber. You know that Mr. Lang is from Texas? Did y'all know that? Yeah. I'm not, I'm not making any kind of a whatever thing, FERPA, FERPA, HIPAA regulation or something else. Uh -huh. okay. so type in Texas fallout. Let's see. Texas bird fallout. T E X. And then hit video. Uh, does something come up? Spring migrating bird fallout? Four minutes and 45 seconds? Yep. Yep. Okay. South Padre Island, Texas. Do y'all see what the date is up there? April 21st, 2021. Y'all remember that from last year? No. We had a frost about April 24th. Y'all remember that? I'm being serious, we really did. It was real late April. Yeah. So birds recognized the cold front that was coming through and eventually it was gonna be here. And there were several hundred species that were migrating. That means they were headed north from South America, Central America, into uh, our country and uh, they landed down in South Padre Island, Texas because of the really severe low, low pressure system that was coming through at that time. So they didn't want to cross it because uh, a bird in migration will lose perhaps 50 or more percent of its body weight. So trying to get through a low pressure system, a bird might not survive it because it doesn't have enough resources stored, you know, and a bird doesn't weigh that much. So it doesn't have a whole lot of, uh, you know, like myself, uh, I could survive for a month or two without eating, but a bird, not so much. So I thought y'all might like that video because it shows some beautiful birds. It starts out with a painted bunting, then there's a Baltimore Oriole, there's a Scarlet and Summer Tanagers. There's beautiful birds uh, in the, uh, there's a ruby throated hummingbird. And so it shows a lot of migratory birds if that makes sense. So, and uh, it was just a year ago, and uh, I'm sure farmers around here were pretty scared about the, their crops at that time. But for birds, they were scared about their lives, you know, especially those in migration. So, birds can recognize air pressure, especially low pressure systems, and respond to them to save their life. 